I owe you an apology, by the way. Uh-oh, what is that? I owe you an apology. Maybe well, we should what, say this off the air. No, 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 do it on air. You know, you, you, you used to tell me that, you know, this whole shadow banning from Twitter and stuff, and I'm like, oh, dude, please, come on, like... But it turns out it was you were completely right. Like it was you was t- you were telling me that all along, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I wasn't thinking it was a conspiracy theory. Yeah. But now, you know, Jack goes before Kong. He basically lied. He lied. He lied. He lied. He lied I, hope he, I hope they get him for perjury. <laughs> Someone like you who cares about truth, when you hear him say these things. If you're willing to grant me the the leash that what I'm telling you right now is true, that okay. gas prices, for example, I'll gi- I'll, when he came in, we're I'll about two thirty. They the went leash. up to five. Now they're around three thirty. So they are higher than when yeah. he took office. And then he says they're coming down. It's a complete. Tri- it's a, just a verbal trick. Now I have no doubt Trump did it. I have no doubt Obama did it and everything else. But I think something's happening now where the lies because of COVID are so everywhere in society and they have been so uh, debu- debunked in real time right. that, that people can't take it anymore. Something feels different about the lies. We can be lied to to a certain degree. And I think we're, we're crossing a threshold with the lies that is going to do something very dangerous, something like that. So, so what are you asking then? So what I'm asking you is do, when you, when, if you can grant me that what I just told you I is true about gas you. prices and inflation, that it is true. Inflation was here when he got into office. Then it went yeah. here. Now it is down a little. So his argument, eight percent. Right. right. His argument is that it's down, but it's like no, it's not down from when you took over. It's down from the peak of it o- over the summer. Yeah, and the implication of that is it's causal. Like it, he caused it. Like right. There's some some policy position or the Fed or something. Right? Which is also dangerous that they think as political beings and as presidents that everything that happens is because of them, which is also nonsensical. Right. But what I'm asking you specifically is, in terms of the manipulation of truth that they're all constantly doing, what do you think we do with that? Boy, that's a fantastic question. You know, I think that's one way to bridge the liberal, conservative, Republican, Democrat divide, is just stop denying reality. I mean, one of the things that jumped out at me in that talk and I don't know if, you, I think you've had Heather McDonald on yeah, the oh, show. Yeah, many times. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah, going to yeah. come on in a couple weeks. Yeah, yeah, okay. So she's great at this. Matt Thornton has a great book, The Gift of Violence, about this. When he was talking about the police and the role of the police with young black men, yeah. I mean, th- that was just so contrary to what the data is. Since George Floyd, homicide rates among among black men have gone up 50%. In my own city of Portland, Oregon, they've gone up uh, well over 200%. And that's another story. I'm happy to get into it, but that's another story together. Yeah. Um, death from by young black men, the number one cause of death is other young black men. Yes. And that's the only true for those quote unquote racial groups. And so I think denial of reality and not stating we need to be blunt about facts and evidence and not couch them in political terms. Now, when he talked about, you know, whatever his value systems are and how you can solve the problem, that's another thing. But to blame the police for this or to say that the police are causally, the, you know, I can't remember exactly how he framed it. And that's just, not only is that that it's false, that's just complete denial of reality. Well, not only is it a denial of reality, but I think he does it as a bit of cover because he ha- can't lose his radical base. Okay, so that's the That's thing. a political okay, thing. Okay, so that's now. the yeah. thing. You need to signal to your base. And so I think that there is, so I lost, just, just as a sign, I lost a thousand followers on my tweets last, last night, night, which I thought was kind of funny. I, <laughs> I hope kept, I got you, I, I hope I got one I, or two I, for I you when laugh, I was kind of making yeah, fun of you. Yeah, no, I just kept yeah. laughing about it because, you know, one, it's good to not be ideal, captured by your own sure, audience, sure. Your, uh, audience capture. But the other thing is, I, I think if you're not willing to cross the line and say, look, if somebody does something, not everything Ron DeSantis, if you're a lefty, does is bad or not mm. everything, but so many people they're just not willing to cross the aisle and say, look, this is true or this is false. Um, and, you know, Harris was up there, you know, clapping, you know, robotically clapping at these idiotic things that are clearly divorced from reality. I don't know in a two party system what the solution to that is, given the penalty for crossing the aisle. Andrew Yang and others have suggested, well, that there is no solution. You have a third party, et cetera. I don't I don't know. I don't know what the solution is, but I do know that the environment is so toxic right now for even saying you agree, or not even that platforming, going on someone's show. I just talked Mm -hmm. to uh, Brian Keating this morning. Yeah. Uh, You know, even going on someone's show when he did the PragerU videos and the grief people have gotten 
uh, uh, from that, that the left then won't have you on because right. it's Constantine Kissin is another example. I'm another example. I You're used, to, I used example. to be able to go on oh, all you, sorts of things. I owe you an apology, by the way. Uh oh, why is that? I owe you an apology. Maybe well, we should what, say what this off do? air. But no, 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 do it on air. You know, you, you, you used to tell me that, you know, this whole shadow banning from Twitter and stuff. And I'm like, oh, dude, please come on. Like, but it turns out it was, you were completely right. Like, it was, you, was t- you were telling me that all along. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I wasn't thinking it was a conspiracy theory, yeah. but now, you know, Jack goes before Kong. He basically lied. He lied. He lied. He lied, he lied I hope under he go, oath. I hope they get him for perjury. He lied under oath. As he we're, lied as, under oath. As Correct. we're taping. Well, the thing is, and what his lawyers will get him out of and why no one ever goes oh, to jail Oh, because they didn't call it sh- shadow yes, banding. Yes, exactly. They didn't, it's, it was a linguistic trick. Okay. They never called it shadow banding. What did they call it? They called it, uh, what did oh, they call it, guys? Um, it was D-something. It was de-escalation. Some, what was it? Yeah, uh, visual filtering oh, yeah, or okay. contextual so, filtering, yeah. something like that. Right. So they were just playing with language constantly. Right. Right. To, well, that's to the other thing everybody does is bamboozle everybody through language. The woke people are particularly, the woke crowd are particularly good at that. They just bamboozle people. So, okay, so I have a feeling we probably have less disagreement on some of the policies than, than may, we may even think. But on the race one, yeah. specifically, in that moment where he t- talked about how, you know, when you get pulled over, black and brown people, my children never had to be told right. that they had to keep their hands on the wheel and blah, blah, blah. It's like... I was actually told that. Yeah, that's what you I said on my show this too? morning. My dad yeah. said the first time I went out driving with my dad, we went to H.B. Uh, Thompson Middle School parking yeah, yeah, lot yeah. to go drive out there it's because they were, you know, it was a big area I could drive. And before I even started doing anything, he said, he said, David, if you ever get pulled over, you keep your hands on. He called uh, you David. Yeah, he called me David. Okay. He still calls me David. You keep your hands on the wheel. And the fact that Biden went out of his way to racialize that. Totally. So, and also black and brown, the implication being that somehow this yeah, is some Indian people. And it's just. So I don't know if you, have you had Wilfred Riley on your show? No, oh, I've, I've met him a few times. I'll, I'll have him on. The, the hate crime hoax yeah. and stuff. I mean, fantastic. What, what a shame that we have to live in a society where I have to say to you, well, he's a black academician. Like, that yeah, shouldn't have literally anything to do with it. But he has some some. Should I tell data. you about my black friend, Larry Elder? Right. I feel better right. About See? This right. So, so we don't. That's the other that's the other kind of point of commonality. What should we do is we can we should be able to agree that there's a truth of the matter independent of whatever immutable characteristic you possess, right? So if we can't agree to that, then there's a just, we're in, I mean, it really isn't commensurable at that yeah. point, but um, the fact that we consistently racialize this is a problem, but here's, here's my pushback on that. Because so many, and I do that thing for my YouTube channel where I go out and I ask random people questions yeah. uh, and I put them on a line from, you know, neutral to strongly agree and strongly disagree and, they walk to the side. What, what do you call that, by the way? Spectrum Street Epistemology. Yeah, street, we're going to link to the channel below. So street Epistemology yeah. from my first book. I was in yeah. Eastern Europe. Is it better to be ruled? It's better to be ruled by the USA than Russia or the USA than China. All kinds of questions: homosexuality, abortion, trans, everything. Yeah. But consistently, one of the things that I find in that is when I talk to black people, not African Americans, but black people, they are they're pissed, and they're they're deeply. They're not even deeply concerned. They're they're worried. They're fed up, and I think we need to have an honest conversation. Like, is that imaginary? Like, is that are those concerns they have? How rooted in reality are they? If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about academia, check out our Academia playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.